Hey everybody, it's 3 Yams. I've been gone for a while, but I'm back. And uh, today I wanted to give you guys an overview of a new series I'm gonna be starting here. Um, so I've been in, I've enjoyed, you know, making three yams, three words, but I've, uh, I've been feeling like it's time for something new, you know? So a couple of months ago, I was spending time with my family. Uh, I was at my parents' house. They live a couple of hours away from me. Uh, but during this visit, I found out that my eight year old nephew has become obsessed with Pokemon. Uh, he was showing me his collection of cards and books and other stuff that he had, just all kinds of Pokemon stuff, talking about them, asking me what my favorite one was. It reminded me a lot of myself at that age, you know, when Pokemon was just starting to gain popularity in the 90s. The 90s, man. I'm old. <laughs> uh, anyway, later that night, uh, I discovered some of his drawings. Um, he'd asked my mom for some uh, for some paper or something while they were waiting to do something else. I don't know. And uh, he ended up creating 20 unique Pokemon, you know, all with their names and different typings. I remember being that age, you know, and drawing my own Pokemon, too, you know. And I wanted so badly, you know, for the ones that I created to to be actual cards. You know, it was cool to just draw them, but you know, you have your imagination where you just imagine them being extra cards or even being in the cartoon that you would watch. Um, so I, I'm gonna take his designs and I'm gonna actually make them into actual Pokemon cards. And I wanna share it with you guys. Um, you know, I've always been interested in character design, you know, drawing creatures. Um, a lot of times when I was doing the three M three words, I would usually lean towards, you know, uh, doing some sort of creature design, but I haven't, uh, at least not that I can remember. I haven't ever tried to draw an original Pokemon before, you know, before I get started here, I wanted to give a quick disclaimer about the B roll that I'm using for this video. Um, the drawings you'll see me doing in the background are actually uh, randomly generated Pokemon fusions from the Pokemon Fusion website. Um, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to try them out and thought I'd make pretty uh, good B roll footage. So hopefully it isn't too distracting, uh, you know, jumping around and stuff. But uh, let me know if you enjoy them and maybe I'll do a whole video on them. So. I did a little bit of research on Pokemon designs uh, just to kind of get re try to get ready for this. <laughs> a lot of places really uh, they suggest that you know simplicity is the key to a great Pokemon design. Um, really, you know, a great character design in general has, is is overall pretty simple. Um, I've got a poster on my wall, you know, that I've had oh my gosh, probably for close to twenty years. Uh, but looking at all these, you know, old school Pokemon, uh, definitely reins reinforces this idea. And there's also been, I don't know if you've uh, seen this, but some five minute Pokemon renderings that people have been making, uh, 3d program in 3d programs. Um, and it just kind of proves this point as well. You know, you can still pretty much tell which Pokemon, uh, each of these are, even though they're really, really crude and quickly made. I just think it's amazing <clears throat> that uh, that Pokemon designs are cohesive enough to still be recognizable in this state. Cause this is terrible. Like this is really, I mean, it was done in five minutes. So, you know, for five minutes is pretty good, but overall these are kind of scary. And also, you know, at, during my research, I was, uh, I was thinking that maybe, you know, this idea of simplicity, you know, simple Pokemon, Maybe it was more so true back in the day because nowadays these Pokemon designs are all over the place. Like, look at, look at this. I can't really blame them though. There are, you know, almost a thousand of these things, uh, you know, 800 and something. And this isn't even all of them because there's a new game coming out, you know, later this year. 
And also this 800 or so number doesn't include all of the ones that have multiple forms and stuff like that. You know, mega evolutions, things like that. You know, if you ask me, the way I see it is you only make sentient keys out of total desperation. Like this is this is your absolute last idea when you when you suggest this. I mean, but here it is, you know, it's a real thing. It it made it. The the guy who came up with this thought he was getting fired and that, you know, his career was over, but no, they put it in. But anyway, I also found a great deal of resources on YouTube um, you know, not just Google and stuff. <clears throat> and uh, there are tons of channels that talk about Pokemon design. And a couple of them have tutorials about, you know, how to really capture the Pokemon look and what makes a Pokemon a Pokemon. You know? I'll link my fa uh, I'll link to my favorite ones in the description in case you guys want to check them out. Uh, give them a watch if you got some time. So at the end of all that, um, all the research I did, I came out with a few bullet points that I'm gonna try to follow. <clears throat> uh, number one, use big shapes, you know, when appropriate and exaggerate different features. Most, uh, most of the Pokemon are defined by a large shape or a couple of large shapes that make up, you know, their recognizable silhouettes. And exaggerated features make the important parts immediately stand out. So. You know, you take a glimpse and you can see, or you can pretty much get an idea of, you know, what that, what that character is about. So, uh, number two was to strive for one major defining feature. Uh, this is actually a principle of strong character design in general, <clears throat> really. Um, so a recognizable character, you know, usually has something that makes them undeniably unique and memorable uh, it isn't a law you know there should only be one defining feature but it's re highly recommended you know, if you have too many then it's hard to tell which one is the most important uh, and you kind of you know make it worse and you know the, that defining feature it will also help uh, it kind of goes with the first one you know taking a glimpse immediately know what your your character is about <clears throat> but uh, this will help to make an assumption about where your character lives and you know what your character does so uh, number three would be a maximum of three colors that's the goal you know uh, for most Pokemon designs uh, most of them have uh, one color for the body and maybe a few accent colors I don't believe these colors uh, include black and white though, like in the main three, unless, you know, the black and white is a large portion of the design, you know, like if its body is black or white, well, that's different. But if it's, if its body is a different color, then, you know, black and white are kind of accents. Um, but anyway, not to get too far, you know, into that, by this standard, I think most Pokemon can be considered one color maybe two at the most. So I'm gonna strive to stay in line with that. So as an added challenge, at the end of each video, I'm gonna put my Pokemon design to the test and see if they meet this criteria. And there's not necessarily something I'm gonna hold as the standard and then throw it out, you know, if it doesn't meet this criteria, uh, just as kind of a learning experience, you know, see what I could have done better, maybe things I don't notice while I'm drawing things I don't really think about. I'm gonna try to keep them in mind, but I think it'd be a fun exercise to see if I can actually manage to be successful at it. So to break those down into little uh, bite-sized versions, number one, strong silhouette. Number two, a clear defining feature. Number three, a maximum of three colors. And number four, this is actually a bonus one that I thought of on the spot. A lot of Pokemon designs are super simple, like simple enough for a kid to draw from memory, you know? So I was thinking, I think that's a really important part to 
Pokemon, especially because it's more targeted to younger demographic uh, demographics and children. So it's important for them to be able to recognize the character. So number four is, is it simple enough that a child could draw it? And with that, I think it's time to get drawn. I'm excited to share these with you guys. Uh, I hope my nephew likes them. And I hope you do too. If you want to see the videos of this series, go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell. Oh, by the way, my favorite Pokemon is Krogunk. Tell me yours in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video.